So I've been analyzing Kim Marshall's picture because I think someone really wanted me to, so why not? So these little dots are actually from the painting. And I've adjusted this photo that I believe is of the painting several times. So I'm just going to zoom in. I just want to focus on the face first. So you can see there's the edge of the eye. That's his left, his right eye. Holy crap, this just doesn't look. Oh, his nose looks like that. The nose is kind of, it just looks so weird. But anyway, her nose, her picture is quite a bit more blurry. And one thing I can do with her picture I, what I did do was tilt it slightly. So I'll show you that. There you go. So you can just kind of tilt this up and down. I might tilt that even just a little bit more. But it lands really well. I think her, the inside of the eye is just a little bit farther out. The mouth is a little bit smaller. But yeah, there's her picture to the painting. The dimensions of everything is really about the same. Um, can bring back these different copies. The Library of Congress picture is actually, if you watch my other video, it's more narrow a little bit. See how the eyes are just a little bit smaller compared to the painting, and I think it just has to do with The paper being wet um, could be the different lens that they used, but it looks more narrow than the painting. Whereas this picture lines up pretty darn well, but this is Carter's. So you can see the difference between Carter's photo that we know is of the painting And it has the illusion of the eye being a little bit more squinty. But it's an incredible likeness to the painting. It's just so much so that it, when you look at the death mask. But one thing I'm going to, you know, we can pull up the death mask. I really tried to line it up right there. There's the nostrils, there's the mouth, I mean the bottom lip is a totally different shape, completely different shape. I, I don't know how it would get that much bigger with death and have a totally different shape and how the mouth would just get so much bigger with death. And, you know, they try to say that there's cotton in the nostrils to make them bigger, but the distance between those nostrils is ridiculous. Like, it's, 
and even in the painting I could see that nostril looked oddly lower than that nostril in the painting with like this is pretty level but in the painting that nostril is like really off but you have that same problem in her picture so I mean they a person that believes Kim that's a little bit older um, spoke with me and just she had just convinced her that this was a real photo of a man that there was camera distortion and if you look at my Instagram page you can see camera distortion with lenses but um, and it can change things a lot but not where the nose lands so I think I might do another video since You know, you can really see that nostril does land right there. And when you look at the death mask, there's too many problems. It, it doesn't line up. And I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm just going to take the death mask away. I think the shape of the mouth, the nose, the mouth and the nose just doesn't really, it's just too different from the death mask and just, it's, the mouth is too small. It's way too small. The nose is too small. It's lands really too low. Um, but one thing that I did notice is I'm going to go ahead and just wrap up this quick analysis of Kim's picture. I see these striations, how there's lines. And how the jacket's kind of blurry. And a lot of things are blurry, but the face is a little bit more. You can see the face better. I'm going to explain that to you real quick here. You can't see the jacket. You almost can't see the jacket at all because there's so much gloss on there. And the jacket's so dark. Um, but because the white, and so anything that's lighter in the painting looks clear so when the light reflects it's not so distracting but you see these stripes on the painting because it's an old painting and they've been preserving sustaining the characteristic likeness of his father since at least 1879 since he got it he's like okay we, we got to preserve this this was from life you know and I'm sure it was special to him but he knew Emma his mother I think he was look like okay well we got this almost completely black daguerreotype we can't photograph it again but maybe maybe I can see some details and change some stuff I think is what happened so it, it almost lines up with those lines you can see there's these lines right there so that is actually something going on in the a modern photo of the painting because there's so much light reflecting on it it's blurring things out and so however I think that's just how the camera reacted like his hair is a little bit darker the hair is blurred out because this gloss top that they put on the painting screwed it up <laughs> so and it's it's that is from the canvas these lines are on the canvas of the painting and you can see the lines more specifically on Kim's picture so that it being a 1950s print as opposed to this being an 1879 print is before they put the gloss on okay I think this was pre glossing it up I, I, I think he was continually trying to preserve this painting and just doing the best that he could and I think one of the most recent steps before you know Kim Marshall's photo was taken where you can see these lines you can see that exact line the lines are right there there's let's even just pick one out that's where that curve right there is in, in the painting there it is there's that line there's that line these are unique features from the painting and so her photo of Joseph Smith has, it's just, you don't even really even see these wrinkles. It's just 
you know, this is a lot smoother than his face is when you look at the death mask. His face is not that smooth. Um, and the lighting really honestly kind of makes no sense, but he might have just been in a super lit room. But for photography purposes, I do know that I believe that Lucian Foster, looking at pictures of Phoebe and Wilford Woodruff, that they, Lucian Foster, who Joseph Smith III remembers taking his father's photo to carry type, um, often put a lamp right there and there was some side lighting. And you don't see that. It doesn't look like Lucien Foster in photography. I don't, I just don't see, you know, I'm just being logical here, but I don't, I don't believe that there was a photographer there present. And so when I made a video analyzing the painting to the Library of Congress picture and all that jazz, when you zoom into this one, um, You can see the stripes. So actually you can see the stripes. You can see a lot more cracking. But I still think and especially looking at this one, I've I've changed the colors and everything. This Library of Congress picture I was um analyzing that to this and to the painting. But, um, in superimposed, so I did different, very contrasting, like red, green, contrasting colors to really, um, for first just to show someone else what I saw. But this does, what else was I analyzing here? Oh, that's just what's below the picture. I was like, what am I reading? Uh, but yeah, showing 1879 for that. Um, I think this was actually Carter's image. And Joseph Smith III said he may have sat, sat for some photos. So it's just, I don't know. I, I didn't see, I haven't found any photos of him at, that were actually by Carter. So it's just a little strange. But as you're looking at this, you see how the jacket is it's blurred out because it's darker and um, so the gloss you can see a lot better you're not seeing the lines on the gloss where it's really light because there's not so much contrast I think the shade of if that makes sense the shade of that the gloss is taking on is actually darker than that so then it's not so apparent it's just where things are darker like the hair so that's where it's given this illusion of where things might get a little bit blurrier because they're farther away or whatever. It doesn't match the death mask. It's not a photo of a man. It's a photo of the painting because it matches perfectly these dimensions that uh, David Rogers got off and cracked because he just is just looking at Joseph whose um, countenance keeps changing he's probably moving his head around he's probably one day four days one day his chin is down because he's depressed maybe his nose is going to land up a little bit lower in the face and then the other day he brings his head up his nose is going to be a little bit higher in the face and that's why the nose looks so strange the nose is really going to be the thing that's going to be the most frustrating and he also doesn't want to offend the prophet so he's going to make his nose look thinner smaller than it looks on the death mask um, and smoothing scars out. He doesn't want to show the scars. The artist, the painter, just is just creating, you know, the perfect looking face and very well may have given him more hair than you see in the 1842 drawing by Sudcliffe Maudsley. Why would a photo of Joseph Smith from 1844 show him with more hair than Maudsley showed him in June 1842. You know, there's, there's just so much off from the death mask and from other artists' artwork. And all these problems are just consistent with David Rogers' forward-facing painting. And 
Joseph Smith III, you know, sends that photo in July 1879, and by August, he's selling photos in the Saints um, Herald, which he's the editor of. It's ran in Plano, Newark, Kendall. Sorry, it's Plano, Kendall County, Illinois. Not far from Newark, Kendall County, Illinois. And so actually, you know, J.S. Bivens was, he was still alive. He was still in Newark at that time when he's getting all this done. And um, copying all this stuff. But by 1880, um, J.S. Bivens is actually working as a clerk in the store. He's not doing uh, photography anymore. So that could be why. You know, they maybe didn't become BFFs. Maybe he's still strongly into Methodism and his family's like, don't go near him. You know, we saw him in 1860. Don't go near him again. You might go astray. I don't know. You know, I think he was probably visiting. It was a young, trusting young man. And here's this guy, J.S. Bibbins. He's J.S. the third, you know, famous minister. Is J.S. Bibbins' father who meets MS knew Emma Smith when he was, she was little, probably talked about knowing she was a few towns away, across the state, actually. Um, There's just too many talking points. But I think the reason why he wouldn't have uh, been the one to photograph the painting, or maybe he just said, he's like, I don't want to photograph a painting. I don't know. But he was in a different line of work. So 1879, this is photographed. By 1880, J.S. Bivens did no longer work as a photographer and so he was just maybe he sold his camera he probably didn't even have his camera anymore at that point but he had an 1860 when Joseph Smith III did travel and I would see him being this young farm boy feeling uncomfortable I could see him being like well just let me borrow the daguerreotype for a little bit for this few week trip or whatever with all these people that now I'm leading they think I'm father now and please let me I'll bring it back because he still lived in Nauvoo. So October 1860s, leaving Nauvoo, going all the way across the state of Illinois to outside of Millington, crossing the river, you know, ten, it just, he's basically in New York, Newark, where J.S. Bibbins is a photographer in 1860, but by 1880, he's not anymore. You know, he could have like, okay, we'll just carefully take the glass off, photograph it. Oh, it's not damaged. It's fine. Put the, you know, put the glass back on maybe the glass broke I don't know 1860 to 1870 that's 19 years from the point that I think he gave it back to his mom the daguerreotype and she just held on to it that was a real photo of her husband and Alexander goes to Utah and he's like Brigham's like I know your mom's got a picture of your dad she's not sharing it with the church mad at her whatever whatever some weird middleman is making us mad at each other that's really most of the story between Brigham and Emma but um like apparently this guy was supposed to bring Emma money to help her family as she's trying to care for kids she's in poverty she's in a ghost town and this guy pocketed the money wouldn't give it to her and said Brigham Young wants you to become poor to convince you to go to Utah but he stole the money that Brigham was sending to Emma. Like there was a lot of just crap that went on that the sons didn't know. And, and now the descendants of Joseph Smith and Brigham Young have tried to figure out all that. But she just was tired, according to one source. They just didn't want to go to Utah. I don't want to go to Utah. <laughs> I don't even want to drive through it, but sometimes I force myself to. But these, these are striations. These are specific details from the painting that are found in Kim's picture. You see these stripes. The striations are from the glass. It's from the canvas on the painting. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about all this. I, I don't think that's a photograph of Joseph Smith. It is just a photo of the painting. Anyway, have a good day.